However, they also have other variations. And I'll just show you one more variation, which is exactly the same thing. And it's called Al-Qalam Ar-Rawhani. And it's exactly the same thing, exactly the same system, the same numerical code. However, they have a, like a hieroglyphic for each one. If you remember back to ancient Egypt, we told you about the history of magic in ancient Egypt and said that ancient Egyptian magic was done with hieroglyphics and symbols. Likewise, Persian magic was done with symbolism and they integrate the symbolism into the magic that they do. Okay, now we're going to begin to show you some of the things that you find within the Ta'weeth. So here we have a Ta'weeth, and this Ta'weeth is called Khatam Surat Yasin. It's called the seal of Surah Yasin. This is supposed to be Surah Yasin. You go to a so-called holy man, pious man, and this pious man says, I will give you an amulet to tie around your neck. And this amulet is Surah Yasin. And they give you this. So off we go and we start decoding these different uh, boxes around here. So let's have a go. Let's just do one. Let's do this, uh, this uh, box here. We're going to do this box. Let me see if I can... I don't think I can highlight it with anything. This one here. Okay, so the first thing we have is one that looks a little bit like an alif. And that is... That is actually an alif. Then we have a one that kind of looks like a seven with a bit of a squiggle on it. So that looks like this one here, which is a wow, a six or a... A six or a, a wow. But it could also be this one, a scene. And you'll see in a moment. Okay, ow. So, ow. We have ow. Then we have another one that looks quite similar. So let's say that's another wow. Then we have one that looks like a dot which may or may not be intended. The dot may just be. And then we have this one that looks like a, a line with a sort of a, like a, like a triangle on top, which looks like this one, a ta. Okay? Now, if we continued going on with this surah, we would find that it is indeed surah yasin. It is indeed surah yasin. It's Surah Yasin all the way around the top and all the way around the bottom. And in fact, I might be able even to show you the ayah that was written. These, this is one of the ayat that is written here. It's the 72nd ayah. And we'll just give you more context on that. This ayah here. And we have tamed for them, so some of them they ride and some of them they eat. This is written here in this code. If you keep on going and going and going, eventually you get there. Some of the letters are written in bad handwriting and you realize that's actually not a thought, it's actually something else. And you go through it and you get فَمِنْهَا رُكُوبُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ However, the, th the problem is, or the issue here is, that this whole top part is the ayah. And this whole bottom part is the ayah. And this band along the middle is something completely different. This band along the middle is a repetition of the names of the shayateen. And you can decode them. We'll uh, give you these as part of the notes. You can actually take some time because we're a bit short on time um, to actually go through them and decode them. But you'll find that it's kind of nonsensical. Do you remember exactly what it was? No, no, the... the, the um, uh, no, it's something like that. It's like, it's a very, very strange word that doesn't make any sense in the middle of the ayah. Now the person who wears this, what do they think? They think they're wearing Surah Yasin. 
And we're going to talk about the ruling of wearing ta'weed in a moment. But they think that they are wearing Surah Yaseen. They think that they are doing something to get near to Allah. And they have the names of shaitan written all the way along their ta'weed, breaking up the, na- the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'weed, you realize that almost all of them are written in this code in one form or another, or variations of it. However, a lot of it will be nonsensical. Now, as you get, you open more of them, you start to realize that the names of the shayateen, you start to recognize some of the names of the shayateen within them. You start to recognize the names of the shayateen that are contained within the, the ta'awith. However, Many times it just contains things that are nonsensical. They don't make any sense to us. However, they do make sense to the magician. And when you look at books of magic that are confiscated from people, you will find that each of these letters has a purpose and a reason. But let's establish something. That anything that you have that isn't the Qur'an cannot be permissible. Let's, I mean, we'll talk about the Qur'an in a moment. Let's just establish that whatever you have that isn't the Qur'an, you can be sure that this is something that is wrong. Certain. And there's no disagreement in this regard. There is some disagreement over the Qur'an. Other than the Qur'an, there is no disagreement. So if you have a ta'weed that is written in code, that is written with letters, random words, that is written with evil things in it, then you can be certain that this is not something that is there to help you. This is something that is there to harm you. Now, we're going to see a simple example. This uh, ta'weev is one of the most common that you will see. And this is known as al-musallath al-ghazali. And this is a fabricated story about al-imam al-ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala that al-imam al-ghazali went to India and he found that the Hindus had Allah's greatest name. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. The Muslims didn't know Allah's greatest name, but the Hindus knew Allah's greatest name. And the Imam al-Ghazali brought Allah's greatest name back, and this is it. You will see that this is written in Abjad Hawas. This is written in the pre in the first code that we had, the one that we had uh, back here. This one here, Abjad Hawaz Hutti Kalim. This one, and you can see what it is. This is the basis and the foundation of every form of sarf in magic. Now, what do we mean by sarf? We mean what we'd call the, the negative. Again, all magic is negative. But we're talking about magic that is done to harm and magic that is done to help. All of it is evil. All of it is bad. But there is a magician who aims to help you and a magician who aims to harm you and all of them harm you. The magic that is done to harm, all of it is based around this. This Musallat al-Ghazali. And you will see it in most of the ta'awith. Now one thing you will notice is that if you translate the numbers 2947536618 you come up with batad zahaj wah three of the well known names of the shayateen these names are well well known and in fact if you were to read the books of sihr from the non muslims and the muslims they recognize that these are the names of three of the devils whose power is incre- incredible and they have so much power to do this and they have no power wama hum bidarrina bihi min ahadin illa bi idhnillah they have no power to harm anyone except by the permission of allah but this is what they do they tell you that it's allah's greatest name and instead you have three of the names of the shayateen these names are so significant that the magicians who blow on the knots blow these names over the knots. So they take the knots, they tie a knot, they say, Batad, Zahaj, Wah. And that is how they do their magic. 
calling upon the shaitan. It's nothing, it's nothing complicated. It's not rocket science. You find the name of a shaitan, you write the name of the shaitan, you call upon the shaitan, you worship the shaitan, you disbelieve in Ar-Rahman, and there you have it. Magic. But one thing I want you to notice is the n- adding up these numbers. If you add up these numbers, in all directions they add up to 15. In all directions. And that is because numbers are very significant to magicians. They have in each number, in each number of pins, in each number of needles, in each number of knots, a purpose. So for this one, they are going to use either 7 or 15. Either 7 or 15. When they use batad, they're going to use either 7 or 15. So you will see a rope or a ta'weed with 7 knots in it, or a string with 7 knots in it, or an egg with 7 pins in it, or a knife with 7 uh, seven nails associated with it, or tied to it, or a string with 7 pins tied around it, or 15. 7 or 15. And sometimes 9. 9 because the number is... 9 or perhaps the number is 9 and 15 9 the number here you can see that 9 9 squares 9 boxes and the the total of the letters is 15 this looks completely innocent and i can tell you if you carried something like this around in your pocket you wouldn't last very long before you became extremely extremely ill and we handle these when we destroy them for people and they leave you feeling extremely ill. You handle the paper, you look at it for a while, you get rid of it and honestly for you know a good few hours you will feel extremely ill as though you've been poisoned. These are not nice things. They come with the shaitan and they attach the shaitan to them. So this one is associated with 9 and 15. As far as I recall, 9 and 15. 